Hi everyone, my name is King IV and this is Introduction to IDEA. And in today's lesson, we'll be talking about importing data. And if you haven't seen the previous lesson, the IDEA software, I'm going to include a card caption here. I'd recommend that you check it out. So in today's lesson, we're going to be talking about how to import an Excel file, how to import an access database file, and how to import a text file. So three different ways that your data could be obtained. And I'm going to show you the three ways to put it into the IDEA software so we can really get into the next couple lessons. So let's go ahead and get started. So I have IDEA open. If you haven't already uh, created a project called tutorial and then put all your data in the source files and all the the data, it can be, you can check out the link below. It's uh, bit.ly slash uh, idea data and you should be able to download all the data that I'm using for these lessons and be able to follow along. So let's go ahead and get started. So I have the idea software open and I'm on my tutorial project and the reason why I asked you to put your data into the source files ilb folder is that once we click on desktop which is how we're going to start importing the data it's automatically linked to to that particular folder so it's going to save you a lot of time and effort and as well everyone understands where you got your data from and where where to look for it so just go over uh, some of these so you have your advanced record definition this is if you've if you already have a de definition in play to be honest I've I don't think I've seen very many people use it but it is a useful function uh, you can also import from AS400 a mainframe system uh, but it's not overly common but if you do have direct connection to the AS400 it's a really great way to extract data from there uh, dbase uh, similar uh, not very common, but if you do have the opportunity to connect directly to the DBase where it stores all the information, that's a really great way. Uh, the next couple are going to be the most common ways. So Microsoft Access. So if you have an Access database, it's a really great way to import data through through that format. Microsoft Excel, ODBC connection. This is where you have direct connection to a database, typically Microsoft SQL or Oracle SQL. Not Oracle, so Oracle database, uh, a really great way to connect directly to data, can save a lot of time and effort in that way. Print and report in Adobe PDF, I'm going to create a custom video, so watch for that or comment in the video if I, if I haven't posted and you want to see it. Uh, SAP, Smart Import and SAP AIS are really two great ways to, to deal specifically with uh, SAP software. Uh, text, which is a very, again, probably the second most common format after Excel and probably the most common once your data files start getting very large. And this is also the way that you would import a CSV file because CSV file is just a very particular type of text file where it's common to limited. And then XML, again, you could get data in XML. It's probably pretty unlikely as you start out uh, using the IDEA software that you're going to get XML files. But if you do, this is a really great way of importing those files as well. So let's go ahead and get started. Start with Microsoft Access. So I'm going to click on these three dots here. And then it's going to open up the folder that contains all the data. And it's already filtered for Microsoft Access, which is great. And then you're going to double click here. Just give it a little minute to then export. Go next. And then you'll see here, you can select the tables. In this case, I only have one table, which is database one. And then you can either so character field options so you can scan records for field length which is which is which i would totally recommend that you do you can either scan all records or scan the first 10,000 lines i recommend unless you know for sure that your first 10,000 lines are representative of your entire data set i really recommend that you scan all and i'll give you a hypothetical example so if you have 10,500 rows of data or 10,000 basically more than 10,000 rows of data and in the first 10,000 rows, your highest dollar value is $100,000, right? In a single row, the highest value is $100,000. But if in the 10,000 first or 10,000 plus N rows, uh, there contains something like a million, 10 million, 100 million, a billion, that number is going to get cut off. So even though it takes a little bit more effort and a little bit more processing power and a little bit more time, I'd recommend that you do scan all just because I think it'll save a bunch of time. 
you can also here create a record number. I would actually recommend doing this. What this will do is this will create like a permanent index uh, that we based off the original import of the data. And it's a really great way to keep a unique value if you don't already have one. And then you can call the output file whatever you want. Obviously, you should call it something that's representative of your data. In this case, customer is pretty representative based off of what we're importing. So let's go ahead and press OK. And you can see how quick that was. Obviously, it's not too large of a data set, uh, but you can see here 341 rows. And there's a couple things you can do. Again, you should always check your data as soon as you've imported. And a couple ways you can check it is using indexes. So you can double click the top. It's going to sort ascending. It's going to create index there. You double click again. It's going to create descending. You can flip between these two indexes already or yeah, indices already. A uh, really great way of doing that. Or you can go back to the original no index. You can do the same thing with credit limit, uh, both ascending and descending. So a really great way to understand and sort your data to see if there's any errors. Or for example, if you had credit limits, credit limits by its logic should should be positive so if you do see negative credit limits or even excessively high credit limits that may be a good indication of whether or not you should question your data question how you extracted it how you obtained it or how you have imported it so once you've got a comfort around that you should always run field statistics absolutely always there's no excuse uh, this is a really great way to make sure that you've imported your data correctly press yes and again if you saw the previous lesson uh, it's going to it's going to do it by field type, so numeric, date, time, but you're mostly going to be focused on numeric. There's two types of checks that you want to do. You want to do a sum check and a hash total check. So hash check is based off the number of records, and you want to compare what's in idea versus what's in the underlying database or data file that you obtain or, or some screenshots from the system. And as well, you want to do a sum check. Usually you do like a net value. You'll do like credit limit numbers or even... Um, num records if you wanted to it doesn't really matter uh, so here if we open it up now we open up the underlying access database so the easiest way I find is just to highlight the column open up Excel and then just paste it and then see that you have the same values which is 21 million three hundred four thousand you could also write a SQL query and do the total here, but in this case, this database is not that big, so there's there's nothing really too much you need to do. So you can also check out see check out if you can put the the total here, and that's that's another way of approaching it as well, which is quick and easy. But again, depends on the version of uh, access that you have and how big your data file is. So now that we've confirmed that. We're all good to go, and we can say that we can now we can use this data for for our analysis. So let's go ahead and move on to the next one, which is going to be importing an Excel document. In this case, we're going to be importing country admissions. So we'll go here. We'll go Microsoft Excel, and we'll go to country admissions. We'll go to next. It's going to ask you, is your first row field names, which it is in this case. It's not always going to be the case. Hopefully it is. Uh, but it's, I know, again, I realize it's not always going to be the case. Import empty numeric cells as zero. Again, not too big of an impact if you do this or not. Usually I do. And this will basically put every empty cell as zero. Uh, there can be some impacts, like it could be treated as null or zero. But in most instances, doesn't really matter. The output name is going to be here. And we're just going to click. You can also, if you had multiple data sheets, you can check them all off, which is really a great way to save a bunch of time, especially if you have... If you have, for example, 26 different periods for each payroll period, if you're doing some payroll analytics, uh, it's a really good way to save a bunch of time. And you'll see here, again, we're going to run some field statistics. Take a look here. So you can see the total is 144,000. And you can see here 144,304 and 1,200 records, which is the same as here. Again, these field statistics are amazing. I actually can't emphasize enough how it, how easy it is to get a really good understanding of your data just using field statistics. So here you can see number of records within min, number of records with max. You can click on here, uh, or what record number has uh, each of the the min and max. You can stack out here. It's a really good way of understanding these different components and 
positive values. If you had negative values, you can easily do this and then save it, print it, extract it, uh, do whatever you want and really emphasize and focus on that area. And or even just understand, OK, I have 73 zeros. Does that really make sense? Or there's some errors in my data. Did things not get captured correctly? Uh, did some people did not put in the right values? It's really a great way of understanding your data upfront. But let's go ahead and move on to text files. So again, we're going to click on text. And we are going to, let's use da, 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 unemployed. And you'll see here the data files look a little bit doesn't look that great here but as soon as you click on next you'll see how it's separated here because it's separated by tab if i were to put comma for example you would see it's just one one column but as soon as i put tab there's four different columns it's going to say first row is first visible row is field names actually don't know why they make the first row disappear but it is what it is it's just an easy way of identifying it uh, as well you can if you had some rows of data before the heading so for example if you had what's common is like the data extracted who extracted all this frivolous information then you can go ahead and skip a couple lines and ignore it or if you had other delimiter formats you can take it out here if you had other text encapsulators which is again with the delimiter is a really powerful way of identifying data and can really help reduce some errors so you can click on next and then here you can define each of the field names which again is really handy as you as you probably have seen when we move from access to Excel to text, you can see how you can have more and more customizations to your data. So here you'll see, for example, the types of, of fields that you can have are character, numeric, date, and time. So you'll see that year should really should be character. And I know I'm sure some of you are at home or in a classroom thinking like, oh, it should be numeric. But really, it should be character because you, things are only numeric if you can add, for example, or perform a mathematical function on 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 the, one of the values and have it make sense. So, for example, if you add two years together, in this context, it doesn't really make sense. So, really, it is a character string just with numbers. So, call it character. It's going to save you a lot of time and hassle. It's a good practice. So, here, same thing with period. Again, you wouldn't multiply period by five. That wouldn't really add much value. But here, people, it's definitely numeric. You can indicate the number of decimal places. In this case, I'm going to leave it at zero because there could be 0.5 people, but in this case, there, there's not. You can also have implied decimals or imp, do not import fields. Again, not overly common here. And then you can as well rename it, put a description if you want to. Here is where you can add some additional fields. Uh, so for example, if you had price and quantity and you want to have an amount field you can as well create it here uh, pretty easily but again i'd recommend that you do that once you have the data imported just so that you know and here you can have filter your data in case you wanted to do some filtering but i recommend unless your data set's really big that you avoid this and do that within your data just because i think it's much easier to make sure you have complete data afterwards and then do the filtering so here you can name it again. I recommend that you generate the field statistics and as well create a record number. You can call it whatever you want. In this case, unemployed is a pretty good title. So again, you should check out field statistics. We can open up unemployed. And I recommend that you just copy and paste the values into Excel. And then you can see here so the total for people is 765 million, 313, 765, 313. And now you know that you've imported the text files perfectly. So if you have any questions or comments, we've covered a really good array of items, how to import an access database, how to import an Excel document, how to import a text file. That's probably going to cover, to be honest, 90% of your importing needs. Obviously, there's going to be some instances where you're going to have to import PDF or report type format, or you're going to have the opportunity to directly connect to the database. Uh, but this should cover the majority of your needs, especially as you start out. But if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. And I look forward to speaking to you next time. Thank you.